Swapping Scales for Suave, Chapter 1 At last, Spike was drawing close to his destination, yet it was as if the weather itself opposed him. Wind whipped against the dragon's body, threatening to tear his alabaster scarf from his throat. Rain pounded against his hard scales, in such a powerful torrent that he had to lean into it in order to not be driven back. And yet, Spike continued onward, the now adult dragon cursing his tall lanky form as he made his way down a tight city street. Old Canterlot surrounded him on all sides, as much more narrow roads ensuring that even with visibility being low, he could still see the signs which hung above the various stores. Which was good, because after nearly an hour of wandering, he was starting to think that Trixie's recommended jeweler didn't actually exist. He briefly considered stopping somewhere and asking for directions, only for his pride to get the better of him. He was Spike the Dragon, and after celebrating his 21st birthday not too long ago, he was officially an adult. As such, he was determined to find what he was looking for without asking for help, and definitely without giving up. Now where are you, Gilded Hen? You should be around here somewhere. Spike muttered to himself as he trudged down the street. Straining against the heavy rain, Spike tried to peer into the gloom, his sharp draconic eyes piercing the darkness. Yet even as he neared the end of the street, his target eluded him. That was until something strange caught his eye. Something jumped out at him, and all at once, Trixie's description of the place returned to the forefront of his mind. It's the place with a golden hen on the sign, she had claimed. But, whatever you do, don't go into the store next to it. That guy only sells cursed stuff, and plus his life is like nails on a chalkboard. Shaking off the memory, Spike found himself in a bit of a predicament. Before him, two doors stood next to each other, but unfortunately for Spike, the sign above was being whipped around so hard in the winds that he couldn't tell which one was the correct entrance. Deciding to go with his gut, Spike turned to the left and hoped that he had chosen correctly. Pushing his way into the shop, Spike turned and shoved the door closed once he was through, briefly fighting with the blowing wind. Once the entrance clicked shut, the dragon shuddered and ran a hand down his face. Oh, that was brutal, he muttered under his breath. After giving himself a little shake and allowing the majority of the rain to fall from his body, Spike strained his scarf and looked around, only to quickly find that he was surrounded on all sides by pillars of random junk and bookshelves packed with thick tomes. It was like the store owner had started off selling used books, only to switch focus and become a pawnbroker shortly thereafter. Swords could be seen hanging next to piles of folded flags and even the odd piece of jewelry. Though clearly not the place Spike was hoping to end up, it still managed to pique his curiosity. Plus, there were a few rings and necklaces hidden amongst the other more esoteric objects placed haphazardly around the space. Which meant there was a chance that he could find what he was looking for, even if he hadn't ended up where he had hoped to. Plus, if he was being honest with himself, this way was way cooler than just any old jewelry store. It reminded him of when he joined Twilight in her rare book hunts to Old Canterlot. The sound of parting fabric made the dragon's attention shift to a curtain which had just been brushed aside. Revealing a strange elderly stallion with off-white fur, and a deep purple mane bound in a braid, which stuck out from beneath a rather strange-looking hat. He also wore a pair of spectacles, which hung on the very tip of his nose, somehow managing to defy gravity by not falling off of his face. His eyes were the color of eggs that had just gone bad, and his heavy clothes obscured his cutie mark, ensuring that it was difficult to identify him. As he approached, he fixed Spike with a slight devilish smile, seemingly unsurprised, to find a dragon wandering the shop. May I help you, Traveler? He offered in a low, inviting tone. Spike nodded. I'm looking for something special. Oh, then something must have drawn you to my shop. Something powerful, replied the shopkeeper, who turned and trotted deeper into his store. Spike followed as close as he could, hopping over the piles of tomes and dodging a rack of ancient Zebrakin spears. He wasn't sure where the stallion was going, but Spike hoped that it was the location of the store owner's special stock. I'm looking for an engagement ring for my girlfriend. I hope to propose to her next week, and I have yet to find something worthy of her," Spike explained. The shopkeeper trotted into a back area, which was slightly more orderly than the rest of the place. Before him rested a long counter, while behind him were numerous shelves upon which an even greater number of artifacts rested. So you seek something worthy of a creature who has everything? Inferred the pony. I do, declared Spike, a dopey grin crossing his face. I've tried nearly every shop in Canterlot, but nothing is quite good enough for her. Tell me, young friends, does anything I have speak to you? Asked the shopkeeper, who gestured to the wide array of objects sitting on the shelves behind him. Spike hummed thoughtfully as he let his gaze wander over the many rows of items, mentally discarding all the cool swords that he saw. 
He also brushed aside the pieces of armor, ancient looking helmets, and even the really wicked looking golden cape. The dragon scolded himself for letting his mind wander, and reminded himself of why he was here in the first place. Rarity deserves something as beautiful as her, something perfect, Spike thought to himself. Other rings and pieces of jewelry passed his gaze, and were similarly ignored one after the other. <sighs> that one's too garish. That one is too minimal. Why does that one look like the Grinch? Well, at least it's better than that brooch with the ogre on it. Spike was about to give up on his quest, but he then saw something so perfect that his eyes lit up, and his mouth began to water. Two rings sat prominently within a black satin case, one of which was adorned with diamonds of varied colors, while the other was much more plain, though it followed the same general design. The second one was a simple black band with two diamonds inlaid within, one white and the other the same color of purple as Spike's scales. The larger of the two was made up of three individual bands, which split near the halfway point, the upper and lower ones being studded with similarly colored diamonds. While the more plain ring only had three of the priceless gems, the more extravagant one had a dozen of them, half of which were white while the others were purple. The central section of that ring rose slightly and had three larger diamonds of alternating color set within V-shaped holders. It was eye-catching. Yet it didn't scream its price tag like Rarity liked to say, it was everything the unicorn had ever expressed interest in, all wrapped into one perfect package. That one! Spike exclaimed, pointing to the box. Ah, oh, you have a keen eye, remarked the shopkeeper. The bands of mutual love allow the wearers to see just how much the wearers care for one another. Oh, really? Spike asked. The pony nodded slowly. Indeed they do, and it even comes with a lifetime guarantee on the diamonds. So if they fall off or whatever, you'll replace them? Spike inquired. Oh no, they would simply grow back in a few weeks. The pony smirked. But I wouldn't eat them if I were you. They apparently taste like burnt shoe leather. I wasn't... well, maybe I was thinking about it. Spike murmured. The pony chuckled. <laughs> Don't worry, young one. Now, allow me to give you a closer look. Spike watched as the shopkeeper lifted them off the back and set the box on the counter before him. Now then, how will you be paying? We take cash, credit, debit, visa, and MasterCard, asked the pony. Wait, hold on, Spike cautioned. What if they don't fit? I am a dragon, after all, and most jewelry isn't exactly my size. I'll touch your hand, dear boy, encouraged the shopkeeper. Spike shrugged and did just that, extending his hand and splaying his fingers. The pony opened the box and gently placed the larger of the two rings on Spike's finger, the band growing in order to fit securely. See? You need not worry about if it'll fit whatever creature is taking your heart, he declared. Oh, Spike murmured. That is pretty cool. Indeed. And the other does the same, obviously, the pony added. I'll take them, Spike declared. The pony chuckled cruelly, his laughter sounding akin to nails on chalkboard. Oh, excellent. Just excellent. He whispered to himself. Uh, did you say something? Spike asked, looking up from the ring. The unicorn cleared his throat. No. Now, would you like that gift wrapped? I'm trying to figure out what happens if they wear the ring, because I'm not too sure if it makes the relationship horrible, or maybe they're just plain mean to their friends, I don't know. But just like any other story, we find out in the later chapters. Anywho, let's get on to our suave donators. Top donators Dash of Evergreen, Peter Coltard, J Tin Man, Darkseid, and Pony Man. Courier Crew CI, Strix, Zar630, Narwhals, TacoCat598, Raiden, Dospo, Delta Omega, Runescythe9852, Rhiny Dragonwolf, Hunter Norman, Austin Rolin, Lightning Blitz, Sacred Moon, Tal Rasha, The Toilet Snake, Sword Brethren Mordred, Ron and Wandering, Ender I63, Random Person Man Guy, Easy, Jack Cadge, Sky Ochia, Leslie Prickett, Starlight Glimmer, Squiddy Boy, David e. Sanchez, Soul Dragon, Gaggy, Trey, Shadow Drake, Joe Piercy, Alex F, Rainbow Dash, Tilka Anderson, TV Killer, John Becker, Leon Reynolds, Zach Raquel, Mr. ECU, Edgar Garcia, One Kingdom One, Nessa Rusan, Vizuri, Dyslexic Character Sheets, Just a Random Boy, and Hodrick Plencart. Thank you all very much for watching this video, and live life to the fullest.